To help us break the code of Neil Peart's drumming with his band Rush, we're gonna look at 11 specific things and we're gonna start with his signature use of single note threes. It's really evident in about the nine second mark of The Enemy Within. This also has the two note pickup that he'll play often in triplet form and also 16th note form. The second thing is his use of a hybrid rudiment called the Herta. Neil used the Herta in so many classic recordings, but there's a great example in the intro for Digital Man. The third thing is his extensive use of well-orchestrated double stops. A double stop is when you play two notes together either on the same drum or on two different drums. And sure, lots of drummers use this all the time, but it becomes a thing whenever a certain drummer uses it as part of his regular vocabulary. The intro for Spirit of the Radio is a great example of this. Peart had a massive drum set, so he had tons of options for his double stops. The intro to Spirit of the Radio also has odd measures thrown in there, specifically a measure of 5-4, but we'll get to his use of odd measures later. We also see Hertha's in this one with a pickup note of two 32nd notes followed by two or more 16th notes. <laughs> You can get the sheet music for everything you hear me playing in this video. Link is in the description as well as in a pinned comment. And at the end of this intro, he goes into the infamous Peart ride cymbal bell groove, which leads us to number four, the infamous Neil Peart ride cymbal bell groove. Okay, this groove and his two-handed ride cymbal hi-hat groove, we'll get to that one in just a second, are must-knows in the Neil Peart catalog. I don't wanna get this wrong, so let me just read this. This groove can be found in Hemispheres, La Villa Strangiato, Spirit of the Radio, Red Barchetta, YYZ, Between the Wheels, Far Cry, The Anarchist, and a ton more. Typically, you'll find this groove swimming in waters of about 140 BPM and higher. He always uses this when he needs a groove with energy, power, and drive. The following examples are from YYZ, about the one minute, 15 second mark, and La Villa Strangiato. Number five, you're gonna get a two for one. His massive use of the flam drum rudiment as well as fast singles between his hands and feet within drum fills and grooves. Let's check out the three minute 56 second mark from Vital Signs. You can also hear him do this in the intro to YYZ. Speaking of YYZ, let's look at that intro to see his use of orchestral percussion instruments. The beginning starts with Crotales, which I didn't have on my kit, so I improvised, but he was well known for having orchestral pitched instruments within his drum set. His part is built around the repetitive guitar part as well as lots of unison hits. And what do you know, Hertz's make another appearance. Oh, and this one has some odd time signatures in there, specifically five, four, nine, eight. But I promised you we would get to that later, not now. Number seven is my personal favorite and it's the issue of why do you always have to play so freaking fast? Most of the examples I'm including showcase his precision and speed. But here's a drum fill from about the 640 mark of La Villa Strangiato that is just ridiculous. I talked about it earlier, number eight, his two-handed ride cymbal hi-hat groove. 
We can hear this about the 28 second mark of the song Subdivisions, and I mentioned it earlier, but it's right up there with his ride cymbal bell groove as being something signature that he uses all the time. Neil is a great example of a drummer that comes up with parts, licks, drum fills, grooves, and then refers back to them almost like he's playing his own greatest hits in their writing. It gives the listeners something new, but also something familiar. Just because it was something that Neil always did was no reason for him to avoid it. As a matter of fact, he embraced that and would play those parts a lot within their writing. Again, I don't wanna get this wrong, but this two-handed hi-hat ride cymbal groove can be found in Subdivisions, Red Sector A, the Camera I, and several others. It's essentially one on the kick, E on the hi-hat, and on the ride cymbal, uh on the hi-hat, and all at a, why do you always have to play so freaking fast, Neil, tempo. The ninth thing is his extensive use of odd time signatures in their writing. The guys in Rush tear through odd time signatures as quick as I tear through a new box of donuts. Donuts. <laughs> In this example from Cygnus X1 Book 2 Hemispheres, around the 106 mark, we can find a very common way that he approaches odd time signatures. He often uses a repetitive pattern in one of his limbs that makes the odd time signature feel very normal. You can also find other players like Steve Gadd and Vinny Caliuta do the same type of a thing. It normalizes the weird feeling of an odd time signature and makes it groove a little better. This is a groove that loops every three measures. It's one bar of seven, eight, and two bars of six, eight. Let's check out the one minute, six second mark of Cygnus X1 X1 book two hemispheres. And number 10 is a personal one for me. He could always make these lopsided, quirky grooves feel so danceable. For me, the perfect example of this is in the song, The Weapon. He had a penchant for creating these left of center wonky grooves that somehow sounded and felt great. For me, it's the kick in this drum beat that makes this such a danceable drum beat. And number 11, the one you've been waiting for, Tom Sawyer. If you're gonna study Neil's drumming, I feel like it's a rite of passage that you eventually pass some type of air drumming test for the drum solo in Tom Sawyer. Right next to Jack and Diane and Phil Collins in the air tonight, this has got to be the most air drummed drum solo in the history of all music. This also showcases his tasteful double bass playing, although he sneaks it in there. Neil himself said any day or night that he could play Tom Sawyer correctly was a great day because it was still such a, such a challenging piece to nail accurately. Now when I look back on those songs, I'm glad to say to people that I will never get tired of playing Tom Sawyer because it's always difficult to play right, you know? And anytime I do play it right, I feel good. It features his signature fast single, Singles, double stops, double bass, as well as his use of flams. 